Hi everyone. In this lesson we are going to look at rotations about a moving axis. Uh, this subject is interesting when you are considering, for instance, a wheel. A wheel is, of course, rotating. But the whole point of a wheel is that the wheel is also moving linearly. It is going from one place to another. So we want to be able to find a way to describe really the motion of wheels. So what I'm going to talk about, there is a uh, general applicability to really anything, but our main interest really is wheels. So let's start off by considering the velocity of a point on a rigid body. What we are eventually going to do is to, uh, calculate the full kinetic energy of a rotating moving object. So that's our end goal here. And we're going to start that by considering just one point on a rigid body. So here is our rigid body. just has some general shape. This is the center of mass. And we're looking at just one point on the rigid body. It has mass mi. It is a uh, distance ri from the center of mass, and it has some velocity vi. And that velocity vi is with respect uh, to a static frame. So, for instance, the ground. So, vi is going to be equal to the velocity of the center of mass, so for instance, if the whole rigid body is moving, you have to consider that. And then you need to add it to whatever velocity that point might have with respect to the center of mass. So this is really that addition of uh, velocities that we had um, in one of the earlier lessons where you have to add up. So this would be the velocity of the center of mass with respect to the ground. This is the velocity of the point with respect to the center of mass. So you need to add those two up. Remember what kinetic energy is. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Well, we have to keep track of our subscripts. This is just point i, so just one point on the rigid body. And this is the speed of that point. Speed is getting squared and the square is equivalent to a dot product of the velocity. And remember up here is where we fully define what the velocity is. So now I'm going to take this expression and plug it into here. And after a uh, doing essentially a foiling process, I get this long expression. And to simplify that just a little bit more, this VCM dotted with VCM is just VCM squared. And this VI prime dotted with VI prime is just VI prime squared. So this is looking a little bit ugly right now, but it's going to clean up in just a little bit. Our next step is to get the kinetic energy of the full rigid body. What we had calculated was just the kinetic energy of one point on the rigid body. If we want the full kinetic energy, I need to add up all of the kinetic energy contributions from all the points on the rigid body. So that's what I'm doing here. I goes from 1 to n, where n is the total number of points under consideration in this body. So, just a reminder, here was our starting point for ki. And now we're just summing over i. So here we have a you know, summation of uh, mi. Here we have a summation of mi. Here we have a summation of mi. What is going on here? Let me pull the sheet down just a little bit. What this is actually representing is the full mass of the rigid body, because you're adding up all the little pieces. And it's really describing the center of mass motion 
because you're considering now all the masses. But the prime indicates it's the relative velocity with respect to the center of mass. So what this part is, it's really the center of mass motion measured with respect to the center of mass, which is, of course, zero. Your speed relative to yourself is zero. You are not moving away from yourself. Your speed with respect to yourself is always zero. So this means that this whole term goes away. And this is what we are left with. After summing over all of those masses, we get the full mass m. And for the first term, it's just 1 half m times the speed of the center of mass squared. And then over here, this was the third term, we get something that we've seen before. This combination is moment of inertia. So here is our full kinetic energy for a rigid body. Essentially what you are doing is you are adding the kinetic energy associated with the overall motion of the rigid body, and then you're adding it to whatever rotational motion is occurring around the center of mass. So that CM, remember, indicates center of mass. So this should come as no surprise that the overall kinetic energy of an object, you need to add up the overall motion contribution plus the contribution from rotations. So that should, like I said, be no surprise at all. Final thing I want to look at before going into our uh, example problem for this lesson, when you are dealing with a wheel, you are dealing with situations where you get rolling without slipping. That's the whole goal of a wheel. You don't want that wheel to slip. And that wheel is rotating about its center of mass. And let's say the wheel has a radius of capital R, and it's got an angular speed of omega. The connection between the angular speed and the linear speed, the speed going from one point to another, is this. We've seen this before, but so it's more of just a reminder. And then also the torque around that center of mass, the sum of the torques, is equal to the moment of inertia relative to the center of mass times the angular acceleration. So these two we've basically seen before. Okay, let's get to our example problem. What we are going to consider is the following scenario. Let me make sure we're in frame. Okay. So, we've got an inclined plane. At the top of the inclined plane, we have a cylinder. And the total height of our inclined plane is H. The mass of the cylinder is M. The radius is capital R. We're asking which type of cylinder is going to roll down faster? Is it going to be a solid cylinder or a hollow cylinder? I chose this example because it is going to combine what we've talked about in this lesson to our previous discussion of conservation of mechanical energy. The only force acting here is the force of gravity. It's pulling this object down. And so we can use this expression. It's just conservation of mechanical energy. Initial energy is equal to the final energy. If that cylinder starts from rest, the initial kinetic energy is zero. And when you reach the bottom of your inclined plane, the gravitational potential energy is also zero. All right, plugging in some values, remember what the gravitational potential energy is. It's mg times your height, and I labeled the height with an h. Our final kinetic energy, since this is a rolling object, we need to account for the overall kinetic energy of the 
overall motion, and then we add up the rotational contribution to that. Since this is rolling without slipping, what I've done at this next step is I remember that the relationship between angular speed and uh, linear speed is vcm is equal to r times omega. So, since I'm taking omega squared, omega squared is equal to vcm squared divided by r squared. And I just put the divided by r squared underneath the moment of inertia. Of course, I can slide that around in this term, no problem. Why did I rewrite omega in terms of v? Well, what I want to know is which of these cylinders is reaching the bottom faster. And so I'm really worried about v and not omega. Notice both of these terms now have a vcm. So I can factor that out. And I can write the expression in terms, uh, or sorry, uh, write the expression solving for vcm. So it's the square root of 2mgh divided by m plus icm over r squared. I have yet to account for the fact that this is either a solid or a hollow cylinder. This is always a good practice when you are doing physics problems. Keep everything as general as possible so that you can, you know, recycle equations as you go about the problem. So this equation is applicable to both the solo and solid and hollow cylinders. I just need to plug in the proper moment of inertia for each of those. So let's do that next. We will first consider the solid cylinder. A cylinder is a well-studied geometric shape. So you go to a table and you can easily find what the moment of inertia is for a solid cylinder. And you plug it in to our expression for the speed of the center of mass of the cylinder. And just performing a little bit of cancellation, here is our expression. It's the square root of 4 thirds times gh. By itself, that's not the uh, most meaningful answer. We need to compare it to our answer for the hollow cylinder. You look up what the moment of inertia is for a hollow cylinder. It is different than that of a solid cylinder, as it should be no surprise. For a hollow cylinder, that mass is distributed uh, far away from the axis of rotation. So, of course, it should be a different value. So you plug in that moment of inertia into our expression for the center of mass speed. And after a little bit of cancellation, you get the following. The speed is just the square root of gh. This value is smaller than this one. So that means that the solid cylinder is going to roll down faster. What else do these results indicate? Notice they only depend on g and h. Both of these just depend on g and h. They do not depend on the mass of the cylinders or the radii of the cylinders. And I invite you to try this out. Go find yourself some cylinders. Find one that's hollow and one that's solid and roll them down an incline. You will find that the solid cylinder will win. That's it for this lesson. Our next lesson will look at uh, work and power in rotational motion.